Today I'm going to show you how to turn just about any stuffed animal you have into one of these. Wow. My son Liam has a ton of stuffed animals. I don't know where they've all come from. I know I bought them a bunch, I'm absolutely guilty, and then they just kind of multiplied. But every once in a while, I get to turn one into this. It's basically a faux animal mount for a wall. And today I'm gonna show you how to do just that, but on a much smaller scale than that tiger head. I'm gonna show you using this. This is a rooster that somehow made itself into Liam's stuffed animal collection after mentioning to someone once that he really liked whatever movie it was from. And if you look at it, it's super cute until you hear its song. The first hundred or so times my son did it, it was kind of cute. I gotta give it that. But then, he did it two or three thousand times more. And at that point, the rooster earned it. He needs to die. No real life animals were hurt in the making of the rest of this film, but please be warned that your childhoods may be destroyed by what you are about to see, as stuffed magical creatures get skinned, decapitated, and hung on display for the decor needs of others. Burke makes stuff is in no way responsible for any trauma or psychosis caused by the following. If you choose to watch on any further, it's purely by your own volition, and you will be fully responsible for your decision to do so. Enjoy. I know that right now some of you are thinking, Hey Burke, why didn't you just take out the batteries? Go away! There's no room for your logic here. Now the first step of this process is totally simple and very subjective. It's just making up your mind about what part of the stuffed animal you want to have mounted. Now it's time to jump in. Every time I take apart a stuffed animal, and yes, there have been many, oddly enough, I find that the process is slightly different based on how it was put together and by what company and what materials they used. So make sure you have an assortment of different sharp things at your fingertips so that you can use whatever is necessary to take it apart. And while every animal will have been made differently, there are two rules that I like to hold to that make things a lot easier and go a lot smoother. The first one is save everything you pull out of the stuffed animal. All of the stuffing, all of the animatronics. That way if you need to use it later on in the process, it will help because you'll have it. And the second is to start from the opposite end of what you want to save. That way you can cut it open and rip everything out without having to get the knives or scissors anywhere near the parts that you want to use and keep. And just in case you're wondering, this is what the animatronics looks like from the inside. It's a little weird. Now that we've got all the motorized pieces and all the stuffing pulled out, take a look at exactly where you want them out to be and leave yourself at least an extra inch of material past that when you cut. Remember, you can always go back, and we definitely will need to, after we have it put onto the first part of the mount, which we'll talk about as soon as I chop all of this extra fabric off. Once you have just the portion remaining that you're going to use for the mount, take all of the stuffing you can and put it back in that portion. That'll offer a lot of stability once it's on the mount. We want the first piece of the mount to fit tightly inside the open portion of the stuffed animal that we're using because this will be the part that keeps all the stuffing inside, which keeps the mount in the shape that we want it. It looks like a three inch by four inch oval will work perfect, so we'll go with that. In and amongst the extremely random bits of knowledge in my head is the fact that the inside diameter of the blue painter's tape that I use in my shop is exactly three inches. So I use that and a tape measure to make a three by four inch oval that'll go inside the open portion of the rooster. When I'm using my Delta 16 inch scroll saw, I try to make generalized cuts close to the line that I've outlined, but not exactly on them. I find it way easier to go back to a sander like this one inch belt sander that I have to get it down to the final dimensions as opposed to obsessing over getting it exact with the scroll saw, which is really hard to do. Once you've made the first wooden piece for the mount, you'll want to make sure it fits exactly how you wanted it to. I decided in this case I'm also going to add a wooden dowel in to add some extra support for the rooster's neck. You might need to do this too depending on what it is that you're trying to mount. Once you have the final fit the way you want it to be, there's a ton of ways to attach the stuffed animal to the first wooden piece of the mount. I'll be using a bunch of tiny tiny nails and a light hammer. Awesome shop hack here. I place a magnet on the outside of whatever metal dish I'm using. That way it holds the nails or screws where I need them to be and it doesn't let them jostle around. But if you don't want to use nails, AC glue or Super 77 could work just as well. 
Now that you've chosen the method you want to use to attach the two pieces, it's just a matter of wrapping the fabric from the character around the back side of the wood and affixing it permanently. Then just grab a pair of scissors and cut off all that extra fabric we talked about before. For the visible wooden portion of the mount, I'm going to be using a piece of cedar I have left over from another project. I wanted the piece to be kind of shield shaped. I used a round container lid, a pencil, an adjustable square, and a lot of patience to create the markings I need in order to make that shield shape. Then I'm going to cut it out and sand it just like I did with the first piece. To make sure that second wooden piece looks really well finished, I make sure after using the belt sander to remove large portions of wood, to switch over to the random orbital sander, and then after that to do some sanding by hand to make sure it looks perfect. Although it's a lot of extra work, that extra effort makes a huge difference. I love the look of natural cedar, so I just used a regular paste wax to protect the wood. It's easy to use, all you have to do is put it on with the grain, give it some time to dry, and then buff it off with extra fine steel wool. Then after sealing it, I found the center point of the piece, pre-drilled a hole for a screw, and used that to attach the two pieces together. Then we had our mounting hardware, hang it on a wall, and it looks awesome. Don't forget, if you don't have the tools that I have, that does not mean you can't make this. Your local hobby store, your local craft store absolutely has all of this wood, probably already cut to the dimension you need, and you can use it to make this. I would love, love, love to see what you guys do. I love building these things. I don't know what it is, but for some reason this one in particular just gives me this satisfaction. I can't put my finger on it. I think it's the silence. I don't know. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you use it. And if you do, absolutely send me a picture of the one that you made. You can find me on Instagram at Burke Makes Stuff or Facebook at Burke Makes Stuff. It's all there. Go check it out. If you haven't subscribed yet, by the way, you might want to get on that. You've been watching for over six minutes, and if you haven't done it and you're still watching, what are you waiting for? It's free, and it helps the channel immensely. I hope to see you guys next time, Wednesday at 4 o'clock usually, if not, at least once a week, every week. I'll see you there.